Um, it's also kind of uh, kind of an eye-opening process where you're like, I can take derivative all day long. I can take a derivative of a chain rule with a quotient rule and set equal to zero and Desmos and find all sorts of stuff. And I know that increasing a derivative is, or a product of a derivative is increasing a function. But can you take a word situation and put it into math language so that then you can apply your math stuff, right? That's, that's the trick. Um, and I feel like, and I felt like that that was kind of the skill that we needed to focus on. And, yeah, well, you know, that seems to be kind of accurate, right? And that's kind of our point of struggle. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, you never really know how much you know until the test. Because you think you know it, you're like, yeah, I got this. But then it's finally, when the test comes, that's when you really figure it out. Or in this case, it was the homework, right? So you gotta give it your best, and you try real hard, and then you figure out, you find out, well, you were either right or wrong. If you're thinking correct or incorrect. So let's go ahead and look at some of these. Um, and we'll go ahead and uh, build it from there. So in all reality, once we get to the equation, I'm almost like, y'all go ahead and do it, right? You just graph that equation on Desmos. If you want to use calculus, you can use calculus to figure out where the derivative is and where it equals it and stuff like that. But you could just, like I said, just use Desmos and graph it. Um, so I really want to focus in on the setup here, and maybe what I'll do is I'll make the finding the actual maximum and minimum the next part of your homework on this particular assignment. So here we go. Um, so all of y'all's clearly read through it, so I'll just try to go through this very quickly. The rancher wants two identical corrals using 500 feet of fencing. That means uh, that's going to re relate to our perimeter. Uh, the rancher side that they're going to be adjacent, so they both have a uh, common side. What dimensions should he use uh, for each corral uh, so that they get the largest possible area? So we are wanting to maximize the area. We're going to need some labels here. Um, I'm going to choose X for this distance right here and Y for that distance, it's horizontal and vertical. If that's the case, then I have an X here, I have an X here, an X here, and an X there, meaning that X is that distance right there. Y would correspond to some of those. All right, uh, let's talk about this 500 feet of fencing. Anybody want to volunteer a formula that will summarize that? Yes, Chloe. So, uh, basically, Y equals 500. This is actually a pretty common calculus problem. It's called the rancher's dilemma problem or whatever. So anyway, yeah, 4x plus 3y equals 500. You can probably find people on YouTube that have done this kind of stuff. Um, we want to maximize area. So uh, give me an area equation here, somebody else. X times y will tell me the area of this region right there. But I've got two of those. So 2xy. This is the equation that I'm trying to minimize. So I need to then change this uh, oh, uh, expression over here on the right side to just be one variable. So I have area as a function of one variable. So to that, I will return to my constraint equation and modify this so that I can get y out by itself. And then I'll plug that value in here. So it looks like we would have 3y equals 500 minus 4x. So y equals 500 minus 4x divided by 3. Plug that value in here. And I have area equals 2 times x times the quantity 500 minus 4x all over 3. Uh, does that look familiar to anybody? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, well, I'm just going to leave that there, and I'll say for your homework for this weekend, you'll need to find the x and the y values, which will lead to the maximum area. Any questions? Uh, All right. Yes. Sure. Um, so how did you choose which ones were x and which ones were y? Because, like, on mine, 
I have pretty much the same thing, but I have the X's and the Y's for reverse. Player's choice. Okay. Could be whatever you want. I call them A's and B's. I could call this whole entire length A and this B, you know. Um, those are just, doesn't really matter. Okay. So, uh, what the difference is, is that depending on where you choose X and where you choose Y and whether or not you choose it to be the whole entire side or like I have just this little region right here, like that, will make a difference in what this equation looks like, okay? But that, but then in the course of that, you'll find out what what the proper numbers are that correspond to you, to your, you know, to your data, but then the numbers that you end up finally getting when you modify them and put them back and label the picture, your numbers will match my numbers based on, on the equation. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? So in other words, I chose X here, you chose Y there, it's a simple, uh, variation. You could have choose, chosen Y here, and I chose X there. You know, and um, then we go through, and I end up with X equals twenty and Y equals thirty. But you end up with Y equals third or twenty and X equals thirty. But when you go back and label it, then the, the, what the picture looks like. Oh, yeah. Depends on where the player is at too. Uh, this is also sort of a classic problem um, in optimization. Uh, believe it or not, it's, I would kind of consider this a toy problem. It's like these are just to make sure if you can get the concept, right? Um, the architect is designing this composite window. It's probably like a Roman window or something like that. Uh, it's got a semicircle on top and a rectangle right down there uh, so that the diameter of the top window is equal to and aligned with uh, the width of the bottom window. Okay, so if I call uh, the width of the bottom window, so I guess I might as well call that W and that corresponds to the diameter, you know, of the semicircle, which is two times R. Um, if the architect wants the perimeter of the composite window to be 14 feet, that sounds like that's some sort of constraint. So we've got the width there. Is there anything else that tells us about this? I don't think so. We'll, uh, you want to call this the length or do you want to call it X or Y? X? Sure, we'll call it X. So the perimeter is 14 feet. Only thing we could have done a little bit is maybe, you know, if the actual window is the whole thing all together, this line is just kind of helpful for us to, to see. And this line right here is not part of the perimeter. It's the perimeter is literally the, the outside section. So 14 is going to be X plus W plus X. Plus um, this one. Region right up here. So it would be the one half to pi r. Mm -hmm. One half to pi r. So we'll clean that up just a little bit. So 14 and 2. 2x plus, and the width. We saw here is what we call that is x is 2r, so I'm going to write 2r plus, and this one half is simple of x, so pi times r. Um, what is he wanting to maximize or minimize? Minimize the area? No, oh, maximize, yeah. So we want to. Maximize the area. So we're going to need to write an equation that relates to the area, right? Yeah. Chloe, you want to get us started on that? Because um, x, y is x times y, but x times w. x times w. And then um, the other area is going to be plus the not the area, mm -hmm. that would be two pi. Yeah, one half two pi. Actually, no. Actually, it's one half pi r squared. Oh, it's pi r squared. All 
right? So this is the equation that we're trying to maximize. Wish I put maximize, but that's okay. And we want it all in terms of one variable, right? Um, I've got an x, a w, and an r. I get that w I can turn into r pretty quickly. So area is x times 2r. That's one half pi r squared. Um, so I just need to get this right hand side in terms of all x's or all r's. Uh, so here's the choice. What do y'all want? X, all x's or all r's? She says r's? Sure. So what we'll do is we'll modify this equation to solve for r, okay? So I get two r's right here, and I just factor an r out. I mean, we can do it. It's gonna be easier to solve it for, for x. So I'm saying like, how are you gonna get these r all, all by themselves? So you factor an r out, then you have two plus pi. I'm, are you comfortable with just solving for x? Yeah. yeah, that might be a little bit easier. Uh, Lisa, let me show you how to solve for R. Okay, all right. All right, so getting that term by itself, we're going to have uh, 14 minus 2R minus pi R would equal 2 times X. So I'm not going to write the 2 times X. I'm just going to write X up here. minus pi r all over 2 times 2 r plus 1 half pi r squared. And some things kind of, are we recording there somewhere? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, you know, the 2's will cancel and you'll, you'll end up with some stuff, but we have an area completely determined by the radius. And if you want to, you can, uh, and your homework is to take that to, you know, graph that or take the derivative of it, find where it's increasing, decreasing. The derivative is positive, negative, where the derivative is increasing, decreasing. Um, I don't really care at how you figure out what the best dimensions are. Just figure out the best dimensions based on that equation. Um, so talk to me in class. How did we do on this one? Those of you that were able to, to set it up, uh, did we get stuck on something? What did we get stuck on? I just didn't realize that you had to use the 14, the term that you said was 14, but I did everything else. Now you I just put R as X, mm -hmm. but that was not. Right, there's nothing that, that indicates that we want the that width here, or this, or, you know, this side right here to be exactly that. Um, okay, and that's why we have to have the, the constraint equation which relate those two. And you can see that, that without doing that, we would not be able to, to, to get the x's in terms of r's or the r's in terms of x's in the equation right here. Okay, somebody else, where'd y'all get stuck up on this one? Making the formula. Okay, which formula, the perimeter or the area? Um, the area. Okay, do you understand how we built it? This is the area of the rectangle plus the area of the semicircle? Um, I would, I, I know some of y'all were treating this just as if as the window, okay? So I felt like maybe that could have been a little bit clearer. Um, I would have been fine if you would have uh, said that uh, maybe we took this into consideration as the perimeter since there is a blue bar there. But um, anyway, I think that could be kind of an issue. Okay, there's the second one. engineers and their fish tanks.
good? So they're designing a box-shaped aquarium uh, with a square bottom and an open top. So it doesn't quite look like this, but it kind of looks that way. Right, right. Um, so it looks like it's kind of clear. It's got an open top, right? Uh, what's the difference between this and that? It's a square on the base. This one is clearly a rectangle on the base, so you get the idea. If I would say it looks like anything, I would say it looks kind of more like a tissue box. It's a little bit more square, but if I had it up there, it looks kind of looks like an aquarium. So. All right, um, square bottom and an open top. Open top means? That you don't consider that as part of the area. Mm -hmm. When you're doing surface area, you don't deal with the top. You just deal with, uh, talking about surface area, the front, the back, the left side, the right side, and the bottom. Um, I heard some of y'all expressing some uh, trepidation at the surface area or you know, just equations and stuff like that. But you know, the surface area on boxes is really not too bad of a deal because what are each one of those shapes? Uh, they're so the bottom one's square, but I mean, in general, they're rectangles. Mm -hmm. So if you look for the surface area of a box, you just say, area of this, 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 area of this. plus if there's a top, area of top. Or you could want to be super fancy, you could say, the area of this times two, going back to the thing, the area of this times two, Plus the area of this times two, but you don't have the lid, then it just shouldn't be simple. So, that's what do. Uh, the aquarium must hold 1,392 cubic feet of water. What dimensions should they use to create an acceptable aquarium with the least amount of glass? Okay, so what are they wanting us to minimize? Minimize the surface area. All right, let's go ahead and write an equation for the surface area. I'll just write S equals, and I kind of alluded to two there a second ago. It's just going to be um, uh, what's the base, so x times x, so x squared, plus we'll deal with the front. So that's going to be x times the height, which we don't know what that is. So x times the height, that takes care of the front. Then you've got the back, which is x times the height. So I'm just going to put a 2 right there. Plus the left side, which is the rectangle. And what do you know? x times the height. So we're going to change that to a 3. And the right side which is right side, right angle, x times the height. So I'm change that three to a four. So plus four x eight. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, they're wanting me to minimize surface area, um, and I have surface area as a function of, at this time, just x and h. But we need to get it all in terms of one variable. So we'll look at some other information. They tell us that the aquarium must hold that much Water that corresponds to the what? Volume. The volume. Um, so the volume. What's that? X cubed. It would be x cubed if it was a cube. Because it would be length times width times height. But it's not a cube. So it's going to be length times width. This is our constraint equation. Um, we're going to solve this for either x or for h and take that number and substitute it in up here. Um, anybody have a recommendation? H. Yeah, let's solve for h. Some of you pointed out there, I agree. 
So h equals 1372 divided by x squared. So tempting. <laughs> Just keep the derivative. We can almost do this one in our head. All right? But we're not going to. But that is your surface area, which you're trying to maximize or minimize in terms of x. And whatever you get for your x, say, all right, this is going to give us the maximum or the minimum surface area. Then you will utilize that x value to figure out what your height needs to be in order to have fill out 1372. Would the, so like if we run the graph out on this one, would the y value be the h value? No, good question. If you graph, if you turn this, s equals blah, 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 then you're going to turn it into y equals blah, 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 okay? Then your, you can think of this as your x axis, and you can think this as your s axis. So when you get an ordered pair and you find out that it's two comma 50, that's a, that's, that's not a real number, but whatever, okay? Then two is the X value, okay? And 50 is your S value, is your surface area value. It's kind of interesting, it's kind of interesting, you know, hey, this is the minimum, you know, I don't know, I'm just using three minutes, three minutes. That's the minimum surface area, right? But that's not going to help you know the dimensions. The, the two is going to help you. That's going to be helpful. You say, all right, two is going to be, you know, I don't even know one way how to draw one of these boxes. Anyway, all right, so we found out that x is two. And then we've got, that's also going to be two. And then the height is going to be whatever the height that's going to give you the proper volume, which we've actually figured out what that relationship is by 1372 divided by x squared. Okay. Mm. okay. Uh, but good question. Yeah, when we when we do graph it, what do we do with this? And what is this? And that hopefully answers your question. Other questions? Um, my question to you then is, what was tripping you up on this particular problem? For me, it was like the same as the other ones, kind of because, like, I thought that it actually mattered what you labeled it as, and I also didn't realize that, like, when I th I thought it said square bottom, but I thought it just meant it had like you know um, right angle corners. I didn't know it meant it was an actual square. So, okay. which I, I mean, I still should have been able to you know do it anyway, but okay. Yeah, it was. Somebody else. Was it the surface area? Was it the volume? <coughs> I forgot that it had an open top. Mm, gotcha. Okay, so that's gonna affect your final numbers. Okay, um, so I'm, I'm gonna give you some class time to, to strike while the iron's hot and work on some of this. But I'm also gonna do the challenge, okay? So let me get a sheet of paper and I'm gonna show you what we're going to do, it's uh, on Monday. It shouldn't take too long. But um, you can make a box if you cut out the corner there, if you cut out the corner there, if you cut out the corner there, and if you cut out the corner there, and then you take this side and fold it up. Take this side and fold it up. Are you see what I'm doing here? Take this side and then pass it to the bottom. <laughs> and fold up. And take those sides that you cut out and you can close you can, you get a nice little box that's open top. Okay? Now what's interesting is that that box okay has some sort of volume. Okay? But if you change how much you cut in, you can do this way. So 
the baby squares are up on, on the nucleus, then it's going to be a different volume, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you all can see these, but you can imagine that this one is going to be It's going to be really narrow, but it's going to be wider, right? Mm -hmm. So which one's going to have more volume? Do you see what I mean? Or you could do like a crazy cut in. And you know, that's going to be something kind of like this. I should have done with the nucleus but anyway. It's gonna look, it's gonna look that compared to this one. It's gonna go a lot higher, but it's not gonna be as as wide. So there's a trade-off. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to expect you to do is figure out what's the best. Uh, if I want to maximize the volume that my container can can hold, all right? Uh, how how much should I cut in? Does that make sense? Should I cut in this? Uh, so uh, I think we have a problem like that. They probably verbalize it better than I do. Let's see what they do. Mm. Is this all the other ones? It's number five. Number five. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it says uh, they want to construct an open top box, which is what we're talking about. Um, their paper is a 16 by 30 piece of cardboard. To do this, they employ plans to cut out squares of equal size, which is what you'll do, uh, from the four corners so that they can be bent upward. Okay, so you cut out this part, you cut out this part, you cut out that part, cut out that part, and then this is the part that remains. You fold it up here, you fold that up here, you fold that up here, and fold this up here. Okay, and then you get, um, you know, your paper. Uh, the question is, what size should the squares be in order to create a box with the largest possible volume? Okay, so on Monday, um, I'm going to give all of y'all some paper and scissors and some tape, and we'll go ahead and um, construct the box that you think is going to have the, the biggest volume. Okay, and, and I'm I'm fine if you want to take two or three. We'll, we'll you know I'll set a deadline. I'll be like it, you know, after 20 minutes, put your put your boxes up here. We're going to see who's you know we'll figure it out real quick who's who has the best, okay? So if you want to just sort of have fun and don't think at all, just do some cutting and try it until you get the one, that's fine. Um, if you want to use calculus and, you know, get the best, then I'll, uh, you know, then, then that's great. Um, either way, I'll give, I don't know, 10 quiz points to whoever has the box with the biggest volume. How's that sound? That makes it kind of interesting. All right? Um, probably unlikely that you could get theirs by trial and error. Maybe you could. Maybe you've got all weekend to design boxes. Okay? But uh, but that's the plan that we'll, that we'll do on Monday, sort of a application of it. Like you can create the, the, the paper box with the biggest volume. And it's totally possible that a couple of you stumble upon the exact correct answer. All right? In which case, then you share the point. <laughs> Where one of you get five, the other one will get five. Mm. All right. So I would say everybody gets everybody theirs, but that that's not really realistic. You know, like you both get your correct solution. So maybe we should do who gets it first. Mm. I don't know. We'll figure that out. I'm gonna give you a standard sheet of paper, so uh, not the 16 by 30 that they've got there. But if you want to work on that uh, over the weekend, you know, maybe you could set up in some of the software just to build some boxes for fun. That's up to you. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, so what will we be using to test the volume? Will we be filling them up with something or? That'd be kind of fun, you know, I just bring a bunch of sand or rice in here, mm -hmm. just fill it all up. But then we gotta measure that. I'm just going to measure the length, the width, and the height. Oh. And multiply them by it. I'll do that one. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. What on Monday, good question. I want those three questions, the, the, one, the three that we did. Um, I want you to give me the dimensions that are going to give you the, the largest or the smallest or whatever. Okay, solve them. Solve the, the answers to those questions. And this will end up being like a two-part 
homework. So what y'all did, and I sh showed me here today, that's going to be 1.1 grade, and then having those numbers and whatnot will be the next part. Um, if you graph it on Desmos, there's a way that you do a sketch of the graph there on your paper, so I can see if this will work. Uh, graph is got the wrong image. Well, no. Give me a graph. Let's do a quick little sketch of the graph. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've been talking too much. You got eight minutes.